Hi, in this video, we will have a look at extracting the values from an email body. I have already made a video regarding this. Earlier, I have received a comment asking, are there any other ways without the index we can extract the data or not? So if you haven't watched the other video, please have a look at first. See the description for the video link below. So in that video, I have described a pattern of data. It comes in a specific order so that I am taking the advantage of the order of the data so that I can utilize the index using the split. It's all in that video. So in this video, the pattern of the data is there. So that means if we are, if we are expecting name, age and address or something like that, it's there. But the name, age and address, it comes in a different order actually for every email. So that means, um, let me go to the floor now and um, build this flow. Okay, so let's use the manual trigger. So in the other flow, I have used the Outlook as the connector. I'm not, I'm not going to go into that, um, you know, um, to building a, uh, yeah, the flow, sending the email and extracting the body. So if it's coming from the body, all you need to do here is uh, map the body here under the compost. So for the demonstration purpose, I'm going to use a manual trigger uh, here. Okay. So the pattern of the body might be coming like this then name and I'm going to put Smith. Then the next line um, is age 30 and company. So I'm going to put ABC corporation. Okay. So suppose that's the format I'm going to get. So what we generally do in the, in the other video I did using the index. So here the, I'm going to show you the order might be different. So that means in the next email, I might, I might get uh, uh, the data in the same order or it could be age 30 is the first, then the name, then the company. So it could be in any order, but the pattern is there. The name should be there, age should be there, company should be there, but there are no specific orders. So that's what we are going to focus here. So how can we extract the data in that case? Okay. So for that, again, I'm going to use a compose here and rename the compose to return. And press the return character. That's it. Press the enter key here. Okay, that's done. Then the next, next step, I'm going to use the compose and using the split. So I'm going to split using the expression, click on the function and say split brackets, go down and uh, use the combos. That's where our value is coming from. So remember that it's a manual trigger. That's the reason I hard coded the values in the second step. If you're coming from the trigger, you need to map that value, like coming from the email, map the body dynamic value there here in the first two combos. Okay. So I'm going to take the output of that combos comma then the second one second uh, compose is my return value here okay so that's done that's a split so what's that going to do here is i'm going to save this flow so i'm going to demonstrate demo split unstructured data click on save and uh, then i'm going to run the flow test manually click on test run the flow click done okay flow ran successfully and you can see here uh, there's a split here so in my first video what i'm doing here is because of the split it's going to return an array and uh, i can directly specify its name you know the split of zero split of uh, one split of two that way i know the first index is name second index is age and third index is a uh, company then okay so unfortunately I can't use the same order here. So what I'm going to do here now is um, because I did the split, the next technique for this, the unstructured data to get, uh, the plan is click on the control and go to the apply to each here. And because it's an array, I can go and get each and every item there. So from here, I'm going to say split output. That is from the previous output here. Then add a combos here, okay? So I'm going to add a combos here. 
and um, I'm going to rename here to each item that is a each line then I'm going to get and using the function and type here item that's it item with two brackets that's a function okay run this flow and see what result we are going to get right flow run successfully you can see there are three items here so it's there are three items here each uh, item is first item is the name second item is the age and third item is the company so I know I want to extract those three values then okay so that's all good going back to edit what I'm going to do now here is I'm going to edit um, sorry I'm going to go uh, yeah edit and then add an initialize variable here so variable initialize I'm going to call this as name and that's the string I want okay the next action again initialize We call age let's make it string that you can make your own favorite data type for that i'm going to use string here and then uh, the next one another variable initialize again and put company here again that's a string value okay so initialize three values here we need that uh, later on here so from each item i don't know because the data is going to be in a different format as i mentioned earlier like it could be age is first then the name and company or in the another email it could be name is the first and age and then company so we don't know which order it is going to come up so i extracted the each item then the next statement it's an if condition then okay so under the if condition what i could do say here is i could go to the function here again and say item So item contains, that's what I'm going to use. I know there's a format there called name colon then. So that's the first thing. If the name um, um, okay, contains item, then going to here uh, and say compose. You can add another compose. Um, well, you can reduce that step. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to say set, uh, set variable. So I'll avoid one step, uh, you know, I don't need to use that compost there, yeah. So set variable and say name. So how do we get the name? So we know that name format is going to be name colon Smith, okay? So again, I'm going to take the advantage of the function here and to click the function, I'm going to say split. Split of the item again, the current item. And uh, in, in that, I know there is a name with colon there. But I want the last value there. So again, I'm going to put last. That's the syntax we need to use here. See that? That's the syntax. So last bracket split bracket item comma name and two brackets at the end. Okay. So that's one. So that means if that is there, that variable is going to get set. That's one we did it. So if I go and copy this and then go to my clipboard and add another if condition. So it's my second condition now. So it's my current item contains. I'm going to change this to age then. That's it. And then here the set variable is going to be age. And then in my expression, I need to change this to age. So that's age now. That's second one done. Then again, I'm going to go to my clipboard. Click on the condition. You could use a switch condition if you want, but you know I'm going to use um, if condition here. And then um, if uh, the if uh, condition is three, again current item contains company with colon, and it just change the name to company colon then, like that. So that means uh, you know I got the value using the last index, so it's the last value I will get from that split. So those three is done. That's a loop outside the loop all i'm going to do here is i'll show you i'll put a compose here just for debugging and the testing purpose and uh, you know i could uh, um, rename this to final results and under the input all i'm going to do here is going to the variable here and say come uh, that's sorry the name let's put that in the order then so i want the name first okay i got the name i'm going to put an enter key here 
then I can use that same variable to get another one like uh, same in same combos. This is just for the debugging purpose, nothing else. So name then the age and again the company then. Here we go. So that means, you know, if you got an Excel sheet, you add the Excel sheet or SQL and you can directly map those variables like that, you know, name, age or company. So in, uh, this is purely for the debugging, debugging purpose, I'm adding this. Okay, let's run this flow and see the results. Okay, so I got uh, A, B, C and 30 here. Oh, what is the name then? So name colon it says. So let me go to the apply to each. It's not quite right. Let me check. So that's true. What's the set variable value there? That's a Smith. Oh, okay. So I don't think I mapped it correctly there. Oh, I mapped it correctly. I thought variable name, age and company there. And under here, the each item uh, for that current item contains name. I put name there. That's a set name name is equal to yeah that's correct then here in the current item is age then that is age and uh, current item contains company contains 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 yeah that looks okay to me that i don't know why it's not showing it name age and company there so what happened there i don't know let me have a look i'm going to remove this line see like that okay let's try to run this again and see i was expecting the right result there but i haven't got the result here the way i want okay so let's see then here uh, it shows a b c uh, row input Where's the Smith there? Smith, I haven't seen the Smith very there, but I can see here and apply to each. The first condition is true. The value is Smith. The second one here, that is false and that is false also because that's the first uh, loop. The second line, that is the age, you can see that. And so first one will be false, the second will be true and that value is 30. That's correct. And next, the third one, company ABC crop. Yeah, that's the ABC corporation. That's that. First two will be false then. That's correct. So how come in my final results, I can't be able to say it? It could be that combos is playing up. So let me change that. Okay, just the name only now. So go into the dynamic one and say, give me the name then. Okay, just try to run this again. Ah, uh, excuse me. So I put the wrong, uh, <laughs> wrong variable. So it should be the company here. It's a basic mistake. That's it. Okay, so let's put name. Next line, I'm going to put age. And the next line, I'm going to put company. There we go. Okay, let's try to run this now. Here it is. So Smith 30 and ABC Corporation there. So let's go and edit this record and uh, I'm going to put age 30 age. So another email comes through as, as an example. I'm saying and the data comes in a different format. I'm going to put here as 36 and instead of uh, Smith, I'm going to say here David. And here I'm going to say X, Y, Z Corporation. Okay, let's put a name in the other and other one also here in the last. Okay, so let's run this and see what the result is going to be. So make sure these three, you know, these three values should be there, and you know, but data can be in a different order. That's what uh, this video is all about. Okay, let's see that. Um, here we go. We got David 36 and XY cop. So without the index, so this is the way you could utilize it. Use the split and then, you know, get the items in a loop using the apply to each. Then from each item, we need to use a condition because we can't use the index. That means we are utilizing a contains with name colon. 
That means we know that's a name. It doesn't matter what order it is come through then. And then utilizing the split, uh, the expression. So I'll put these expressions in my video description. Hope this is useful. Thank you for watching.